So cracking on with the 6502 MUI, I thought I'd have a go at some of these instructions down here and exclusive or and logical inclusive or, or as I call it, or. Because these ones, had a look at these, and they have exactly the same addressing modes as load accumulator. So each one of these is exactly the same, exclusive or, exactly the same addressing modes as load accumulator, and or has exactly the same addressing modes as load accumulator. It makes me think that maybe I could take the load accumulator unit tests, kind of refactor them a bit into a form that could be used for all three sets of these tests. And then I could just run the same code on an and or and an inclusive or an and or an exclusive or uh, see if I can get tests in for all those. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I can't think of anything better right now. I just want to try and minimize the amount of test code that I've got right to do all this because I, you can see that with 150 opcodes to write, you could end up with a ton of code that you have to write. So my plan is to try and, at least in this case, minimize the amount of testing that I've got to do. So I'm gonna start that by taking the load register test that we had, and I'm gonna copy that, and then start modifying it into a set of tests that can run all these three, because load register, if you think about it, load register and register, exclusive or register, they're all kind of the same thing, they're just doing a different mathematical operation on it. But these tests can't really be used in the format they're in because they just take the value and write over the A register. These ones actually take the value in the A register and change it. So they would need to be modified, these tests. So to start with, I'm going to copy this file and then create uh, some new tests. Right, so I've made a copy of the load register tests file. So the first thing to do would be to just rename this uh, into something that's more appropriate. So I'm just calling it and your aura tests, just for want of anything better. We should get rid of these out of that for now. Um, Let's do that. Just make it a bit shorter. And just to keep this compiling, I'll just get this to compile the way it is right now. You know, actually doing that's thing to do. Sorry. Okay, so in theory that compiles which it did and it actually it will actually run and pass all the tests I think yeah it's got a bunch of tests that actually aren't valid for this so where do we start with this um where do we start um we don't need this test cpu does nothing when execute zero cycles we've already done that in the previous one we don't need that one can execute more cycles than requested so load register immediate um, now this is a weird thing because the, the other, these other instructions we're doing, I'm testing them with the X register and Y register, but these and exclusive or and or only operate on the A register. So immediately I can get rid of a bunch of this stuff. So I can get rid of the X register, Y register versions of these tests. So let's do that just to minimize the amount of stuff that we need to look at. Um, Okay, so I've removed all the X register and Y register tests from out of there, so we're just left with the A register tests which are passing, which don't need to. So they're all saying, yeah, can load into the A register. Right, now comes the fun. So what I want to do is redo these tests so that they can do and exclusive or and or. So this won't be test load register immediate. In fact, this should be the only place this is called now, is it? Yeah. So in effect, we don't really need to have these inside these weird functions anymore where they pass in all the stuff. We can take that out and just un where are we? Yeah, we can just 
unmethodify that one. Unfactor. Right, so there's the first one. So I'm not going to call this. Um, I'm not going to call this LDA. I'm not going to even call this and or exclusive or whatever because this we're going to use it to do all three. I think. Can we do that? Can we do it like that? No. Maybe the better thing was to leave it the way where I had it before, where it is in a function. Yeah. Maybe leave this in a function and then I will call the function multiple times with the different um, operators that I need to do. And let's just see if we can get this test to work multiple times. This is test load register immediate. So I'm refactoring this. I'm just going to put it up in here because there's no reason for that um, to be in two places really. That should still compile. Oh, except it doesn't. Why oh, doesn't it? Um, because I deleted it. That still compiles, doesn't it? That does now doesn't compile. Verify unmodify flags from load register. That one needs to be up at the top. You stick that in there, I think. Okay, so we'll clean up all the naming of this and stuff afterwards, perhaps, but this is test load register immediately. So we don't want it to load the register anymore. We want it to do the operation on the register, but it's, and it's always the A register. So this is, uh, it's not test load A register anymore. It's test um, logical op on a register so that's I think as good a name as any um, yeah so we don't need to pass in the register to test anymore I don't think we do anyway um, because it's always the a register so we don't need that anymore okay so once we get one of these working, that'll start making more sense. So this is not, this is test low logical op. So it doesn't take the A register anymore. And what else can it do? It does need to take the opcode because we want to do different ones for and or an exclusive or, but maybe we don't actually, maybe what we want, maybe what we want is this. So we have, I'm going to put an E on the front of that. We're going to have the logical operation and it's going to be and exclusive or, or, or. So those are the operations that we're going to take in. So we're not actually going to pass in the opcode anymore. We're just going to pass in the, the logical operation that we want to do. And from that, we can decide the opcode that we want to test. So uh, I don't know if this is really a good way of doing this, but um, is this a good way? Well, this is looking a bit crazy, isn't it? I've got a switch statement that's putting putting code in. Well, um, yeah. So what I'm doing is instead of passing in the um, instead of passing in the opcode or the instruction, I'm going to pass in what operation I want to do, and then I'll work out the opcode from that. So if we want to do logical and, um, 
it is. Yeah, so we want to do, so this would be CPU, and we call them instruction, and that's the name of it, and this is immediate. I think we just say, do we just say IM for those? We just say IM, yeah. So in theory then, this one is the same thing, except it's called or A. And this one is the same one, except it's called E or. So what we're doing is we're just pumping in the correct thing to test. And then out at the other end, um, this is the weird bit because we we don't expect it to equal the A register anymore. We expect it to have done the correct operation with uh, with the A register. So really the, the A register beforehand needs some kind of value in it, like a suitable value, like CC for instance. Um, and then afterwards, we need it, we need to expect it to have been the A register should have had the correct operation done with that. So we expect it to be we expect the operation to have been done on those two values. Um, so do we call that just do logical op? And then I can actually put a function in there to do that on a byte. So I could say do logical op, I can take in this byte uh, by A, by B, and so here we go. Now this is a very similar thing here, is so we're going to do a very similar, I'm just going to copy this switch statement because it does what I want. This is going to return a, uh, A and B. This is going to return A or B. And this one's going to return A exclusive or B. Right, and then if, if we don't do any of those, we're going to throw an exception. I mean, this, you shouldn't be able to get to here anyway. Just it's just in case something goes wrong. Um, so, in in theory, now that's a working test, I think. Other than I haven't defined these. Yeah, so I haven't defined these things yet, but in theory, that's one test. Um, one test that can test the logical op, what would it be? So now we can just do test logical op on, on register immediate. I mean, and in theory, we can kind of like, this is really how the function's named. So actually we can get rid of that and the logical op is and test the logical op and on a register. Let's do it like that. Right, I think that is it. And then we can do or and then we can do exclusive or. Right, so that's that's one test for the immediate mode for all three of the logical operations. So all I've got to do now is do something very similar for the rest of the addressing modes, which we've already covered when we did LDA. So I think this next part's just going to be quite a lot of uh, just me doing the same thing over and over. So I'm probably gonna to go to warp speed for this one and just get this done. Uh, and then I'll come back to you when all of this is implemented. 
and hopefully we've got all the unit tests. So engage. Right, so that was a bit of a chore, but I have refactored those uh, load accumulator tests into a bunch of logical operation tests, basically. So we've got 37 failed tests for testing the, I think 24, is it or something? Uh, yeah, 24 different uh, tests, 24 different opcodes that are in there. So that's a pretty good start. We don't know if any of these is really right, the refactoring's right because they've just failed anyway. But it is saying instruction not handled, instruction not handled. So that's kind of what we expect. So that's a good start. So next video, I'm gonna get on with actually implementing these. This should be a lot quicker and easier than actually all what I did here because writing the test actually took longer, I think. Um, but at least I've got a good set of tests to start from, I think. So uh, we'll do that in the next video.